Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about a massive storm system bringing an intensifying snowstorm and then all three modes of severe weather, including tornadoes, damaging winds, and large hail with a lot of big swings in temperatures. Welcome back everyone. I appreciate you guys following. I have 92,000 followers following my daily updates and I would love to get to a hundred thousand if you're new to the channel if you're just now seeing me if you're if you haven't subscribed already it's free to do so all you do is click the button and you can click the notification bell when I do my daily updates on a daily basis usually in the morning times but we've got a lot to talk about and because we've got a lot of big swings in temperatures over the next really seven to 14 days and a lot of moving parts this morning here is the overall jet stream what we're looking at as far as the big picture we had some very heavy rains over hawaii flooding rains they even had a state of emergency out there now we're looking at for that powerful jet coming in and we've got one to the south and this one to the north what's going to happen is these are going to merge and when they merge it's going to set the stage for a pretty significant snowfall threat for portions of colorado places into denver gets in the action and that's just going to intensify uh, into a pretty large uh, snowstorm as this continues moving across and as these as the jet stream merge merges into Friday going into Saturday we could be looking at a pretty powerful severe weather threat coming up for Friday night into Saturday we're talking about a 36 hour event and it could be a multi-state event as well as we're watching this powerful jet come across and it's going to be a sharp temperature gradient on the backside dropping 30 degrees quickly and as it moves through, it's going to be moving all three modes of severe weather. So we've got a lot to talk about. Let's take a look at the overall hazard map for this morning. And what we're looking at here is that, yes, that developing system that's going to be coming in off the west. It's already got winter weather advisories into portions of Nevada going into Utah. Salt Lake City is going to get into the action with some snowfall uh, from this system. Eventually, it'll move into uh, western parts of Colorado. It's going to be great ski uh, heavy snowfall for that region and it'll actually uh, move across into portions of uh, Nebraska getting into extreme southern portions of South Dakota getting into northern portions of Iowa and southern Minnesota and then eventually this will extend into Wisconsin with some very heavy snow and intensifying they don't have it under yet because we're still that's going to be more of a, a Friday going into Saturday event for Wisconsin then we've got all that fog down to the south uh, with some very fog advisories and a lot of areas down south have been, has been foggy in the morning times um, as of late. So let's take a look at the map for this morning. We do have that a little bit of light snow. It's fallen over the mid-Atlantic states uh, and the northeast. Uh, so, so a lot of this isn't actually reaching the ground but where it does you could pick up a, about a one to two inch uh, snow snow totals in this region. It's not as impressive as it looked a lot of the ensemble members was hitting at kind of a one to two inch type range and some of you won't even get that uh but yeah i mean it's it's got a lot of dry air just mixing in so as it's falling in the atmosphere some of this is actually ev ev evaporating uh before it hits the ground but you can see where the freeze line is but we're all of our focus uh now turns out to the west uh, where we're going to be having that developing storage system that's going to be coming in we've got initial snows that are going to be coming in back into places like wisconsin with that first system and to say green bay going to be at some adding to some of those totals but this this uh system that's going to be coming off the west coast is just going to be starting to develop by the time we get into thursday afternoon with some heavier snowfalls moving into uh, nevada going into utah and that's why they've got those winter weather advisories in place right now but for the rest of the country we're going to warm up uh in a big way in fact we could be looking at upwards to 15 record high temperatures this is december guys so we're talking record heat is on the table and that's actually going to be fueling these storms going to be setting the stage for severe weather whenever you see temperatures in the 80s and 70s in december that spells trouble mother nature does not know what time of year it is it just knows the dynamics it taps into and when you've got that fuel to tap into with the strong cold front that's going to set the stage for some severe weather and we're talking record highs in dallas maybe 81 degrees almost 90 down here in south texas but you can see where the where the warmer air lies into the mid 60s in missouri 
much of good spread of 70s and in into the southeast and i think that's where it's going to be having that severe threat once that low level jet uh comes into the region by friday night so as we move through and you can almost see the beginning stages of that low level jet that vorticity starting to dig down that massive trough that's going to be developing and initially develop a snowstorm out into the rockies great ski ski, uh, ski weather uh, out there coming up so it's going to be like laying a pretty significant snowfall snowfall pack in the ski resorts and in, into uh colorado and i think denver does finally get in the action with some snow uh creeping into that region on thir thursday going into friday as we watch this uh you know developing trough really starting to get its act together really starting to about friday friday night but it really doesn't get its act together until it really passes dallas and oklahoma city so once it does that essentially i think things are going to be starting to ignite as we're watching that increasing snowfall threat start to move into yeah denver is going to be seeing the snowfall by then going into you know friday afternoon we've got that snow moving into northern uh nebraska here uh southern south dakota getting into southern portions of uh, minnesota with all that rain and that severe threat it's really going to be starting to crank as we get into that friday night time frame you can see once we move into friday night i think that's when storms st start to explode out here as this as the intensifying snowstorm as it taps into that low level jet it's got that plenty of freezing weather to deal with you can see actually where the freeze line is going to be so it's going to be a sharp gradient in temperatures about 30 degrees difference from the south to the north because in fact we even zoom higher on friday we're talking upwards to 48 record high temperatures i mean this is december folks and we're talking 85 degrees in the dallas Fort Worth area low 90s 93 for the deep south so that is plenty warm for december standards i mean well, that's december 10th by then and you can see the sharp gradient widespread 70s in oklahoma widespread 70s in, Ar in arkansas and missouri going all the way up into the ohio valley i mean you're 62 63 degrees for ohio and indiana that's some crazy stuff that's what we're having to deal with as this low level jet taps into that atmosphere and when it does it's going to set the stage for a lot of severe weather you can see where the jet's going to be flying as we get into friday night time frame and i think that's when it really starts to get its act together unfortunately it really doesn't start to get its act together at, at at night and these are going to be a nighttime setup with nocturnal tornadoes developing uh with a lot of a lot of damaging winds and and some hail with it associated as well in fact, the Storm Prediction Center has already highlighted where the setup is going to be initially taking place. Now, granted, this is three days out. This is a slight risk, and I greatly think with a lot of the dynamics that I'm looking at, this is going to be going into at least an enhanced risk and maybe even a moderate. I, I mean, so I will fine tune this as it gets closer to the event, but it looks like this could be a, a pretty significant event over about a 36 hour time frame so this is the setup by friday i think they really start to get their act together once they cross into east texas they've got a marginal risk for severe weather into places like houston going into east texas i think they really start to crank up once they get into shreveport area into little rock going into memphis uh, going into nashville tennessee all the way up where it taps into that energy right the 70s and 60 degree heat that's going to be tapping into so all three modes of severe weather is on the table including tornadoes and these are nocturnal nighttime tornadoes as well so have your weather radios handy uh for this uh, potentially could be significant event for severe weather as all this kind of comes together but this is mainly the bullseye where it's going to be lying for a uh, friday so and let's take a look at another parameter that we have to look at i mean as this moves through in the latest uh, gfs guidance yeah kind of the same thing and this is definitely concerning where you have probabilities over the 70 percent range and oh such a widespread area even including 80s where it starts to really start to get its act together in northern louisiana southern arkansas northern northern mississippi here so this is deeply concerning that we're seeing such a, a lot high probability this kind of far out i mean this is going into friday night time frame so all this is starting to come together and starting to really lock in 
on a severe severe weather threat could be an outbreak and that's just friday i think things really start to get going the day on saturday because there's your high temperatures on saturday i mean you can see the sharp gradient with that sharp strong cold front that moves through we're not talking 85 degrees anymore now we're talking 54 so you can see a 30 degree drop on the back side you think that's cold it's really technically not because the average high is 59 so it just shows you where we're coming from and but where the severe threat is going to be and where you're in that cold and where this where that where you're already cold the severe threat's done for you by Saturday. So all the severe weather is mainly going to be in the southeast and portions of uh, the Kentucky, uh, Tennessee, going all the way up to Ohio. I mean, we're, we're talking mid-60s in Ohio. We're talking upwards to 70 degrees for a high temperature in New Jersey coming up on Saturday. That is some warm stuff for December the 11th. I mean, that's the atmosphere that we have that's going to be taken advantage of and as that as this moves through it's still going to be cranking out the snow in places like green bay and i think that's where it really starts to intensify once it gets into uh wisconsin we could be looking at totals upwards to a foot of snow is definitely not out of the question where we've got heavy rains and all the severe weather threat uh down to the south and this is going to be moving fairly quickly as well we're talking 30 40 upwards to 50 miles an hour at times you're going to have probably little to no warning with these particular storms that are going to be coming through so definitely have your weather radio handy and just kind of be on high alert guys i mean we got a 36 hour window and really a multi-state event it looks like coming up for friday night into saturday because look at the powerful jet that's going to be coming across on Saturday, it really starts to intensify as we get into that Saturday time frame. So this is, looks to be a kind of a, a longer duration event covering a multi-state event. So this is definitely concerning as some of the data is starting to come together. And it's really concerning when you're seeing updrafts, helicity index values of something like this. This just gives you an indication on where the, up, the where the lift is going to be, where the updrafts are going to be. Don't take this exactly verbatim in your area, but it's definitely concerning that you're seeing powerful levels of updrafts and long track of drafts as well. So once a tornado is possibly going to be on the ground, it could be on the ground for a while, and that's deeply concerning. Or a good chunk of the country, the southeast, going into the Tennessee Valley, going into Kentucky, and the portions of southern Illinois and Indiana, and where it's got really that fuel to tap into of that warm sector. So I will fine tune this as we get closer to the event, but it looks like a lot of dynamics are coming together that this could be a fairly significant event on between Friday and Saturday. And finally, I think we'll move offshore by the time we get into uh, the day on, on going into Saturday night into Sunday, because the, here's the setup by the time we get into midnight, these things could be off the East Coast. I mean, this could be all the way through the East Coast with some severe storms, uh, by then, by the time we get into uh, into Saturday night, but there's your snow. Here's here. Let's let's kind of fine tune the snow event because there's going to be two two different systems coming through to the north side where it's going to be plenty cold and where that that trough is going to be digging in. We're talking multi inch snows upwards to 12 to 18 inches in Silverton. This this app this this area has been desperate for any moisture whatsoever. It's been starved, depressed. You know, it's been starved. I mean, Denver hasn't even actually got any snowfall this year. So. This is a, the most significant event they've seen so far this year with a good, you know, 8 to 12, some, some areas 12 to 18 inches, Steamboat Springs 8 to 12. So you can see this is the official forecast from the National Weather Service. And right now they're forecasting 1 to 2 inches in the Denver, Met, in the Denver Metroplex to break the, what, 230-day drought. It hasn't snowed since late April in these regions. So this is definitely highly unusual but this could be just the beginning of what what are things to come as the, we have a change uh, in the overall setup. So let's kind of zoom in to uh, some of some of the uh, snow amounts. So we could be looking at places like North Platte, Nebraska, maybe two and a half inches. Once we get into Sioux City, maybe seven Sioux Falls, another seven inches out here, another eight inches. So northern Nebraska looking at a little bit heavier totals where that, uh, that swath uh, comes through. 
as we move into uh, places like Lamar's seven inches, Mason City about six and a half, you know, you can definitely see some of the sporadic where that banding sets up. Des Moines a little bit less than that, two inches. But to the north, could be looking about eight inches in Worthington. And then definitely, I start. I think it gets its act together once it gets into, say, places like Rochester, nine inches, Minneapolis, two inches. And Green Bay really could be almost the bullseye. I mean, we're talking, you know, six to eight inches. I mean, let, this particular latest model run is about 11 inches. So they could be on the bullseye from the, the, the maybe some of the highest totals they've you're going to get from this particular event. So, and then we actually have the uh, the Green Bay and uh, Bears game on Sunday. So this, I think the snow ends, it's uh, on Saturday. I think it ends on Saturday and it's gonna be crystal clear skies on Sunday, should be sunny weather. But a lot of that snow, obviously it's not gonna melt. I think the low's about 16 degrees in Green Bay on Saturday night. And then it only warms up to about 34. It does get slightly above freezing, but it's not going to be enough to, you know, obviously, you know, melt all that snow that's going to be falling before the event. So, it, you know, the Green Bay game could be uh, looking at, a, a, you know, a lot of snow on the ground, at least uh, out in that in that re region for Sunday night. So if we expand the version, you can see where this where the snowfall setups are going to be. This is just between now and going into Saturday and Sunday timeframe. So just over the next four to five days for this particular system, there's that bullseye out in Utah into Colorado with the one to two inches in Denver. We've got that swath moving through the, the plains and the upper Midwest and really starts to get cranking as we get into Wisconsin, going into uh, uh, you know upstate uh, upper peninsula here with some of those totals eight to 12 inches is definitely not out of the question. There's your rain prospects set up. Unfortunately, this misses much of West Texas, misses, misses much of Oklahoma and Kansas. Are really starting to get sudden start to get its act together where I showed you mainly in East Texas, but really into Louisiana, especially into the Southeast, into the Tennessee Valley, where I'm deeply concerned for a severe weather. It's pretty a significant event that could be on the table as much needed rain actually comes back in the picture for the west coast and that's just through sunday guys so as we move forward into next week just to kind of glimpse we could be doing this all over again because there's a lot of big swings in temperatures i showed you the temperature gradient and we as we get cold again by this weekend we rapidly warm up again out of the good chunk of the country so we could be looking at more colder weather moving in with another trough that's going to be coming in off the west coast but more importantly some much needed rains coming into the picture for california even los angeles by monday we're talking maybe an inch of rain in Los Angeles, California. So they have not seen something like that in a long time. So we got desperately needed moisture coming back off the West Coast. But I think as we get into the middle of next week and as it taps into this energy again, I mean, some of these values are upwards to 20, if not up almost 40 degrees above average in places like Iowa, places like Ohio next week. So, I mean, that's some crazy stuff. And I think we might do all this over again with maybe above average rains and another possibly some, some more severe weather with another pretty big significant trough coming in for next week. So it's gonna be a lot of big swings and temperatures really over the next seven to 14 days, but I will break it down on a daily basis for you and keep you ahead of the storm. I appreciate you guys watching. Do like this uh, video and definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.